everyone, I'm Allie with the Potomac Beef Company and I'm gonna show you using some of our new check glass O beads, how to do a um, netted bracelet. And it's gonna be using O beads, size um, 11 OC beads and size 15 OC beads. For my example here, I use the metallic maroon Duracoat and I also use the mixed metallic O beads along with a bronze color, the dark bronze um, C bead. I'm switching from my example that I'm gonna make for you guys to using uh, Duracoat 11O seed beads in silver. I'm using the Lava Red O bead, and I'm using a Crystal 15O silver lined crystal. I'm also gonna use one of our um, cup buttons here, and the cup button is in the silver crystal color. In addition to that, I have my .006 wildfire beading thread, a size 10 English beading needle, and some cutters or your thread burner, and then also some glue for the end of it. So we're gonna get ready to make this, and you can make a variety of widths of this. I'm just gonna make it four wide and we'll get ready for started to make that bracelet. So the first thing I've done is I've cut my beading thread and threaded my needle. I cut five feet of beading thread and I'll probably need to add on a little bit more to make a seven or seven and a quarter inch bracelet. I'm gonna pick up a bead of a different color. This is just a uh, violet color 11 OC bead, doesn't matter what it is. I'm using about 10 inches that I'm leaving on the end of my thread after that stop bead. Again, stop bead, you're just going up through your bead away from your tail towards the long thread of the wire and I do that two times. This weave here I did four seed beads in between my sections of my O beads. You can do four, you can do three, you can do five, it's kind of up to you how lacy you want this knit weave to be. I'm going to use four just like I did in the example but to start out with my pattern what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on an O bead and one of my 15 O's. Let that drop down next to the stop bead. And then I'm going to go back through the O bead. And that's going to get that right next to the stop bead. After that, I'm going to do a rotation of four seed beads. Let that drop down next to my O bead. And I'm going to do a 15 O, an O, and a 15 O. Letting those drop down next to those last four beads that I put on. Next, what we're doing is we're going through the O bead and down through that 15 that you put on. And I'm going to pull nice and tight. So that way it goes right up next to those four C beads. After that, I'm going to put on four more C beads and another 15 O set. I'm going to do this four times so that way I have four of my 15 O's and my O bead set on my first starting row here. Back down through the O and the 15. Pulling nice and tight down towards the 11s. And one more set. And four seed beads go on. Let them drop down next to my last O. On goes my 15 and my O. Another 15. Letting them drop down into place. And going back through the 15 and the O. So this is going to be my starting row here that I have my four groupings of my O bead separated by three groups of 11 O. To start my next row, and you can see it's kind of taking shape a little bit already, to start my next row what I'm going to do is I'm going to add four more seed beads I'm going to add another O, and the O is always going to have the 15s on the sides. 
back down through the 15 and the O and out. Make sure that, get, that gets pulled right next to your 11s. And then again, four more fifth, or 11 O's go on. After I have that rotation, and that's going to be my pattern from now on, that every time I get ready to add, I'm going to be adding four seed beads followed by my O rotation and four seed beads. I'm going to skip over the fourth O bead and I'm going to go to the third one. What I'm going to do when I go through the third one is I'm going to go up through that 15 O that's already on, up through my L. That's going to make a little bit of a triangle. Go through the 15 O that you already have on there. That's holding your O in place. Back down through the O. Back down through the 15. When the needle comes out, you're going to be done your little first rotation. So that's going to be the side of your project. Next what I'm going to do is get ready to add my next grouping. So next goes on again, four of my 11s, my crystal grouping with my O bead. Drop those down next to my project. Go back down through the O in the crystal coming out. Pull that down nice and tight towards your 11s. And then again, four more seed beads, because it's always going to be four seed beads, then the O, then four seed beads. After those four seed beads go on, just like I did with the first O that originally got, that I skipped, which was O number four, because here's my rotation, one, two, three, four. I grabbed onto three, skipping number four. I'm going to skip number two and I'm going to grab on to OB number one. Going up the back, through the OB, through my crystal, down through the OB, and I'm going to get ready to continue with my pattern. Again, my pattern is always going to be then I'm going to be using four seed beads, one O with, a, with 15s on the side, and then four seed beads again. So these two O's are sitting up straight. I know those are done, and I'm going to pick up these two O's that are the furthest from my stop bead. So I'm going to do four seed beads, then I'm going to do my O, going back down through, the 15 O, back down through the O, and the 15 O. So that way the second 15 O that we put on holds that O in place. Pull again nice and tight. On goes four more seed beads. And then I know these are sticking up here, so those are finished. And I'm going to grab onto the ones that are sticking out going up through the back here, up through, you want to turn it over you can, go up through the 15 at the back, pull nice and tight, and that's going to get your next rotation in. Again, I'm going to go through the 15 that's at the top of the O bead, down through the O bead and down through the 15 right underneath it, and out. If you notice that it's getting tight, you can also use a size 12 English beading needle. And there I have my next little one in place. So I'm ready now to go from this O here to this O, jumping from this one to this one. Again, four go on. On go my seed beads and my O's. 
back down through. Once I'm coming out, again, four more seed beads go on, and then I'm gonna link over to this O right here. This is a fun and kind of funky bracelet. Not one that you see every day. That's why I like it. You just wanna make sure as you're going, see how that O kind of wants to pop down to the bottom? You wanna make sure that as you're working with it, that you keep your O's to the top so that way they don't turn to the bottom of your bracelet. After those four go on, again, up through the back of this one on the side. Come out the top. And that's gonna get that weave going. Once I'm out the sides, again, I'm gonna add four seed beads. I'm gonna add my O, four seed beads, and I'm gonna link in to the ones that are sitting at the uppermost section. Once a bead has four coming out of it and you're getting that crisscross, you know that that bead is done. So we're not gonna go through this one. We're just going through these two here. Again, once I get to the end, you're repeating that you come out the 15 and the O, go through the 15, and then back down through the O, and through the 15 below it. Ready to start then on your rotation to make it longer, doing the four C beads, the O flanked by the crystal, 15 O's, and then back to the four C beads after you get back through your beads. Once I'm through the O and through the 15, again, you're always putting on four more seed beads, making sure that it stays down in place next to your 11 O's. On go four more seed beads. And then again, we know which one we're linking into because this one here already has four seed beads coming out of it. This one does not have the four, so this is the one that we're gonna link into. I'm gonna go up the back, up through the 15, out through the O. And that's gonna get me my next one there that hangs right in line. Again, after I sew through the 15 and back down through the O and the 15, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna link on to this one right here. And you're just continuing your pattern, linking on to the OB that doesn't have the four quadrants coming out of it. And you're always adding four seed beads, an O and a crystal, and the O and crystal set, four more seed beads, and then going back in this knitting pattern. So I'm gonna continue on with that a little bit, and you're gonna get your nice sides, and then when you wear it, you're gonna see all those O's sticking up. So I'm continuing on with my project here and it's gonna get longer and longer, just doing my four, then my 15, O15, oh, 15, and then my four again. And it's just gonna get longer and longer as I work on my project. Um, you can also use 11 O's in place of the 15s if you wanna get a little bit of a different look. Um, this is the same bracelet too. If you're having a little trouble with the O's, it's a little bit harder to keep track of. You can also look at our um, crystal netted bracelet, and that bracelet, when you're looking at it, is the same pattern and the same idea as this one here. So it's the same idea, just a tiny, tiny bit different, but if you have trouble with this pattern because of the O's, you can pick up the crystal lace pattern um, on one of our other YouTube videos and continue on. But like you guys, I'm just gonna continue on with my project, linking in to the ones that still need two more attached to them and continuing on to make it bigger and bigger. Once you have your bracelet to your desired length, what you're gonna do is add your clasp. Again, I'm using just the button clasp. And when I'm coming out the end on one of the sides, I'm gonna almost create a side and a corner here to make it a flat surface by adding six of my 11 O seed beads 
and I'm going to add all six of those at once. Then after I add those, I'm going to go up through my last little O bead here that I put on, up through the back, just as if I was getting ready to put another section of my O beads on. I'm going up through the 15 O and in through my O. And what that's going to do when you pull is it's going to create a little corner on my piece. So it kind of finishes it off there on the ends. I'm going to go back down through the O just as I would normally. And then after I come out my 15, I'm going to do the same thing by adding more beads and just not O's. So again, I'm going to add another collection of beads in order to get my clasp on. My clasp is gonna sit right here in the middle of this section. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to use four beads, just like if I was getting ready to put on one of my O beads. I'm going to use four beads and then my fifth bead that I'm going to put on after that I'm going to go up through the back of my cup button. So I'm going up through the back, out through the front and to tie in the color a little bit I'm going to add an O once I'm out the front and that color will just sit right in the middle of my button. To hold the button in place with that color I'm going to use one of my elevenths go back down through the O, but this time instead of going back through the same hole of my cup button, I'm going to go through the other hole and come out the back. And pull that nice and tight and that's going to take that down right to those seed beads. I'm going to go back through that fifth bead that I put on, just the fifth bead, and pull and that's going to get that button to sit right there in place. I'm going to add four more of my 11 O beads. And that's going to be used then to connect it to my last O section on that side. So I'm going to go up through my 15, up through my O, through my clasp, or through the other 15, back down through the L, and through the 15 at the same time. Once I'm down those beads, I'm actually going to follow my thread line, and I'm going to follow my beads here then I'm going to reinforce my clasp. To reinforce my clasp, I'm going to go back through the entire clasp and come back down to this other cornered section right here. So I'm going to go back up through my clasp because anytime you put on a clasp you always want to make sure that you reinforce it because that's going to be the area of the most tension. Going back through all the beads, coming up through the back of the button, coming out the top, going back through that O, which is a little tricky, and going down through the other side. Once I go down through the other side and come out on the other side of my button, I'm going to go through then and again reinforce those beads. Once I'm done coming down that side, all I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with the thread line and just knot off on the sides to secure my project. After I knot off a couple different sections, what I'm going to do is use a little glue and glue along some of those areas that I knotted. And then we're going to flip over and do the other side. And on the other side of the bracelet, it's just a simple loop clasp that you can put on. You could do a peyote loop too if you want. I'm just going to do a nice simple loop after I finish this side. And again, I'm going to knot off a couple different places, cut my thread short then, and use a little dab of glue on those two spots that I 
not at all fat. I'm gonna flip over here to the other side and I'm going to put my needle on my thread, take off my stop bead, and get ready to put on the loop. When I get to the second side, all I'm gonna do again is we're getting ready to make that loop, is I'm gonna create a corner again using six beads to create that corner, then going up through my last 15 out, which would actually be the first, very first one that I put on, and down through that 15 out, and down through the super duo, and then I'm gonna link up and create my loop, just as I did on the other side with adding my cup button at that next step, I'm gonna add my loop here. Once I have that through, creating that corner, I'm then gonna create my loop. And the loop I'm gonna create, again, after I have four beads on each side, then I'm gonna create the loop out of other beads. So I have my four beads on, then I'm gonna do enough beads just to go around the button but not too big that it's gonna make it have a lot of slack to it. So I'm adding all the beads that are here right along my needle and off the bead mat. Push those all down next to the beads, the four beads that I originally added. I'm gonna see if that loop's big enough. I'm gonna add a couple more beads to make the loop big enough for sure to go around the button. And after I add those last couple beads, I'm gonna go back through the fifth bead that I added. So I added four and then I started adding beads for my loop. I'm gonna go back through bead number five. Just like I did when I put the put the button on the other side. So I pick up bead number five, and I'm gonna go back through bead five, and that's gonna create my loop, just like that. Again, four more beads are going on. And really this is just a repeat of the other side. Then I'm gonna pick up the last O on this side here, on this corner, go up through the back of it, and pull that to create my loop going through the 15 just as I have been to anchor, going back down through the O, and then I'm gonna follow the line back up again to reinforce my clasp. So I'm gonna go back through this whole loop and tie off just as I did with the other side, tying off and then gluing as well. And this is gonna secure my loop a little bit more so that way that point of tension will have two threads going through it. After you're done making your loop and gluing off, your bracelet will then be finished and it'll be done and ready to wear. It looks really nice on the wrist. And if you do use a button clasp, it's quite easy um, to put on with the button and do the loop and just feed the loop over the button. So it's rather easy for people to do usually by themselves. So it's a good idea for your clasp to do the button on it. It gives it a nice, fun, kind of spiky look. I've been having a lot of fun playing with the new O beads and hopefully you guys will get a chance to get some and play with them as well. Again, if you have a chance to visit our Facebook page, also view the rest of our YouTube videos. Also, if you check out potomacbeads.com and go to our locations page, you can see the different locations that we have classes, as well as that you can get all the different materials that you need in order to make some of these different YouTube projects. If you don't live near one of our stores, we'd be happy to help you at thebeadco.com to shop online and gather the materials that you need to do whatever projects you're working on. So thanks a lot for watching and have fun with your O-Beads.